Okay, this uh, program, folks, explains how to use a void function in a program. So here we have a demo program that has a main function. We've been studying the main function all semester. You know how it ends with return zero and a nice comment statement that says end of main. So far, everything this semester was, was limited to the main function. But in this demo, if you scroll down past the main function, past the end of main, there's more. I threw these nice comments, green comments in here just for uh, beginners to see how it's broken up. But right here is a function called display menu. And here's one that has a name display receipt. Functions like variables should always start with a lowercase first letter. And if there's a second word or more, it should be capitalized. Functions, just like if statements and loops, need a set of parentheses. And uh, functions have this word void, and sometimes other words are in front of the name of the function. We'll get to that later. And functions also have a body to them, just like an if statement or a loop. In this case, the body is four lines of code here, and they're indented for good style. And all functions should have a nice little end of message at the end so that fellow programmers know where one function ends and the next one begins. Anyway, this CPP file has three functions in it. Display receipt, display menu, and don't forget about main. Main always has to be there, and you must spell main, M-A-I-N, it's the rule. Okay, well, here's how it works. In this program, after you declare your variables and present the loop, uh, start the loop, Instead of see outs that see out the menu right here in the body of main, we have what's called a call statement. This line of code, display menu, empty parentheses, calls a function. In other words, it tells a function to, to do its job. To find that function, you, the programmer, have to scroll way down here to find a function named display menu. If it's not there, we have problems. But in this case, of course, it is there. So the program executes these four C out statements, and then it jumps back to where the call statement was. And it picks up where it left off, up in the main function. So really, a call statement is just a way of dividing your code up and putting it somewhere else in your file. It breaks up complicated chunks of code it allows you to focus on different things in different sections. It helps you divide the labor amongst different programmers. One guy's job might be to uh, display the menu. Another person's job might be to write the function called display receipt. Another person might have an accounting background. His job might be to compute tax. Uh, another person, her job might be to deal with user interface. So she has a function called like get user inputs. And uh, just like building a house, you have somebody who, who uh, ex excavates the hole for the basement, another person who builds the wooden frame of the house, another team of people who probably put the roof on, subcontractors they're called. We have functions that act just like subcontractors. So this is a call statement, and uh, it just tells the computer to stop right here and go down to the display menu function, execute it, and then come back up and pick up where it left off. Um, later on in the program, in this demo, we have a uh, function that gets called right here. Display receipt is the name of the function. In this case, the parentheses that follow it are not empty. There's something in the parentheses, obviously, book subtotal. So assume that book subtotal is a number like 81 or 45. That number, follow with me folks, that number 45 gets passed as a parameter. This is called a parameter. Even though it's a variable, it's called a parameter also. And it comes down here like my mouse is moving and the 45 plugs in, in this case, for a, a parameter named amount. Even though they're not the same name, they know that they match up. See this? They match up. Why? Because in the call statement, the name of the function is display receipt. 
And down here, in what's called the function header, the first line of the function itself, the name display receipt is found. So as long as they're named the same, and as long as there's one thing in the parentheses here, and there's one thing in the parentheses here, C++ knows how, knows how to match them up, even though the parameters have different names. Now the word double here has to be down here just because. It ha we have to tell the computer what data type this parameter amount is, whether it's an int or double. And book subtotal, just for the record, if we scroll up to its variable declaration statement, it coincidentally is also a double. You might have problems if you have something that's an int that's matched up with and passed as a parameter and plugs in for something that's a double. So in this case, uh, pay attention and make sure that the data type matches up. But the names usually do not match up. You could type book subtotal down here so that it matches book subtotal up here, but you're just fooling yourself. Because really, this parameter down here is a separate parameter that has its own chunk of memory independent and different from the chunk of memory that this is. It's like two guys named John Doe in the same town, if you name them the same. So it's not really the same variable or parameter, it's really two different things. So we often use a different name on purpose, just so that we don't mislead ourselves and think that it's the same thing. But the same number will plug in. Now I continue. Now that we know that 45 is plugged in here for amount, this function, the body of it, executes and anywhere that you see amount, like right here, 45 will print out. And when you hit the end, it just knows to go back up to the main function and pick up where it left off, which the only thing we have left to do here is system pause. End of story. So in a summary, we have a program here that has uh, three functions and it breaks, it breaks the logic and the code up into those three functions, all in the name of organization, proper uh, efficient programming by different programmers at a company perhaps, and also reusability. You see other computer programs like other CPP files could also make use of these functions. And that's a great thing also that I'll stress in a later uh, demo.